for people in search of quiet neighbors, a stroll through Sleepy Hollow Cemetery in Concord certainly fits the bill. One of the favorite places for this circle of intellectuals in Concord to walk uh, was Sleepy Hollow before it was a cemetery. Ralph Waldo Emerson, Henry David Thoreau, and Louisa May Alcott, a few of the intellectuals you might have found strolling the fall foliage here. And if you follow the signs to our next hidden gem, you'll find they're still here. David Wood is curator of the Concord Museum. Henry Thoreau was buried somewhere else initially, but uh, his grave was moved to Sleepy Hollow, and it took some time, but uh, all the authors were gathered into one place. These are people who are writing about the highest life. Sleepy Hollow now is, in its own right, a, a pilgrimage site. More than 150 years after their deaths, visitors still travel here, leaving tokens like tributes to ancient Greek gods. To understand why, we transition to another gem, the recently renovated Concord Museum, where physical objects reveal the author's intimate connections in life. Emerson began as a minister, but he resigned that pulpit and took on a new career. Emerson liked to give his audience permission to start the world over afresh. And for America in the 1830s and 40s, this was exciting stuff. Especially for a fellow Concord native, the naturalist Thoreau. One of the highlights of the current installation is Henry Thoreau's desk. He wrote on that very desk. He wrote the draft of Walden. He wrote civil disobedience on that desk and the millions of words of his journal. So arguably the best-selling writer in Concord's history isn't Emerson or Thoreau, it's Louisa May Alcott, who had a, an astonishing career as an author in a fairly new, modern uh, way. All of these writers spent time here in Emerson's study, moved to the museum and preserved as it was when Emerson died in 1882. Just imagine who you might encounter in Emerson's parlor. Emerson did make the effort to make Concord the place where it happened, and to a degree he was successful. We travel to the central Massachusetts town of Charlton to find our next hidden gem, which looks like a church often sounds like a church, but is actually a sewing machine repair and retail store, and so much more. The advice that I'd give to people now is, um, when you fall in love with a building, find out how much it costs first. 18 years ago, when Kathy Racine was looking to relocate her sewing machine repair business, she didn't have to look far. This had been for sale for 13 months, and I hadn't looked at it. And from my upstairs, I could see the steeple. I was in love with this building instantly. Within a year, the Charlton Methodist Church was the Charlton Sewing Center, and the spirit of giving remained. We called it the New England Sewing Sanctuary because people started to come. Do you have, do you have a sewing machine? You know, we, we have a homeless family in Worcester. So that kind of stuff started happening right at the beginning. This is a really safe environment to talk about a lot of things. And that's why Sewing Sanctuary just seemed to fit. Social activism and sewing supplies may not seem a natural collaboration to some, but Racine has long seen the common thread. Sewing started, it was the thing that women were allowed to do. You don't say that to a woman nowadays. And if you had two or three together, they could talk. And so sewing, your quilting bees, all those things were an opportunity for women to feel safe and to communicate with other women. Sewing, and specifically quilting here, has played a critical role in promoting social awareness. I've had multiple AIDS quilts from Washington, D.C. before a group of people would talk about AIDS. And personal healing. It's part of just having a reason to get up the next day and do something beautiful and creative and colorful and meaningful. You can come to the Charlton Sewing Center for advice on thread or to look in awe at Racine's 1860s sewing machine.
And it was the sewing machine that made Civil War uniforms. But Racine hopes you will stay to look at her rotating, hanging installments, like the 2018 Threads of Resistance quilt. That was the most politically charged one. She could choose to be silent, but like the words to the song she plays daily for inspiration. And that 1906 really big organ came with the purchase of the church. Kind of had to because it <laughs> would have been more expensive to move it down the street where the church was building yeah. a brand new facility. So they couldn't do that. Uh, Kathy Racine, by the way, does sing with her own church choir. And mm -hmm. as we learned, we she's did. got a great place to practice. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Next, rediscovering the revolution. <laughs> <laughs>